The imperfect is just somebody that I used to know. The real differences between the preterite and the imperfect verb tenses in Spanish. So a really basic question to ask about this topic is, why do we call it imperfect? Well, originally perfect used to mean completed or finished, something that was done and completely done in the past. In grammar, we use the term imperfect for actions that are relatively continuous, or things that happen several times, not just once. In English, when we use words like used to and sometimes would, we're normally using the imperfect aspect. When I was a kid, I used to wake up at 6 a.m. every morning to go to school. Or another example, when we were little, my brother would always wake up before me. These are things that happened several times over the past. Now, I understand, that's a little um, abstract. Uh, so let's try to write it down. This is called a verb timeline, and uh, they help illustrate uh, what's happening or, and what verbs are trying to describe in sentences. So here's a good way to visualize it. When I was a kid, or during childhood, Everything before this line is childhood. Um, I used to wake up at 6 a.m. So at 6 a.m. I would wake up uh, this day and this day and this day, basically every day while I was a kid. So it's a repeated action in the past. Now this is English, but the, the imperfect in Spanish is exactly the same way. We use the Spanish imperfect to talk about actions that happen in the past on a, on a habitual or a repeated basis. This is different from the preterite, which describes one-off actions in the past with definitive endings and beginnings. Even though obviously I'm not a child anymore, it's kind of hard to pinpoint exactly what day I stopped being a child. Um, therefore, it's also hard to pinpoint exactly what day I stopped waking up at 6 a.m. We're just talking about general things, right? Generally, habitually, I woke up at 6 when I was a kid. It's important to know how to conjugate the imperfect as well. So I'm going to run down just kind of quickly how to do that um, and the steps uh, for each of the verb types because there's ER and IR verbs, I'm sure you've already learned, um, and AR verbs. So first, the ER and IR verbs. These are the endings that we put to the verbs. Um, and, and make sure that you're, you're taking notice of the accent marks. Ia, Ias, Ia, again, that's nice of them to, for, for these to be exactly the same, for el, ello, usted, and yo to be exactly the same. Um, then we have Iamos for nosotros, and for ellos, ellas, ustedes, we have Ian. Now, uh, for AR verbs, this looks like Aba most of the time, and then we, um, it's, it's the same, the yo and the el, ella, usted forms are exactly the same, so Yo would have the end, a, a verb referring to yo would have the ending aba, tu abas, or, and so on and so forth. Abamos. Make sure you're noticing this accent mark here. It's one of the exceptions. It jumps out at you. So the usual steps to conjugating apply. You're in Spanish too. You should be relatively comfortable with conjugating verbs. So um, take a verb. Let's say hablar. And we are going to take off the ending. It's either going to be an AR or an ER, IR ending. Uh, we just take that off. And then we plug in the right ending from the above charts for whoever's doing the action. In this case, let's say yo. So for yo, we have the, the verb. We chop off the AR. We slap on ABA. And we end up with yo hablaba. Simple as that. Now, if you're ever unsure of whether or not you should be using the imperfect or the uh, preterite, here's something that I've come up with that has helped me throughout all of my years of taking Spanish classes. Imagine, you're given a sentence like this one. Daniel, and then the verb that you're supposed to conjugate is comer. Um, Daniel, whatever it happens to be, muchas hamburguesas ayer. And you're supposed to use either the imperfect or the preterite. So what should you do? What's the first step? Well, first figure out what the sentence means. Um, this is going to be important 
um, because if you don't understand keywords like ayer or um, I guess muchas hamburguesas, it doesn't matter what kind of food it is, right? Um, but grammatically, it's going to be the same answer. But something important like ayer, that's important because ayer means yesterday. So try to figure out what the sentence means first. Now, comer means to eat. So the word here in English will either be the equivalent to ate for the preterite or used to eat for the imperfect. If you're not sure which one to choose, insert used to before the verb into the sentence. If it makes sense, then this should be the imperfect in Spanish. You should you go through the steps from the previous slide and um, apply it, and you'll probably get the right answer. If it doesn't make sense, it's probably the preterite. So, if we put used to into the sentence above, we can ask ourselves, does that da Daniel used to eat many hamburgers yesterday? Now, right away, that should feel weird to you, and that's because you're using the imperfect when it should actually be the preterite. This is a completed action. It happened one time, one day, and that day is yesterday. It happened once. So, those are the important things to remember, and that's how you use the used to test. The preterite is usually contrasted with the imperfect, um, and we use this for talking about completed actions in the past, like the hamburgers that Daniel ate yesterday, right? So, this is what a verb timeline for the previous sentence would have been. Um, yesterday, and we have everything uh, before this line being yesterday, and this happened only once. That's when we know this should be the preterite and not the imperfect. So how do you conjugate for the preterite? Uh, this one is kind of similar, but it has other things going on. First of all, the yo and the ella, ella usted, they, they don't match up anymore, but it's still not too bad as far as conjugations go. We have i, iste, yo, imos, and yeron um, for the er and ir verbs. And we also have uh, yo e, uh, tu, pairing with aste, el ella el, usted with o, nosotros with amos, ellos, ellas, ustedes with aron. There are some similarities between these. We have the ron ending on both of these, the mos ending on nosotros, on both of the nosotros, and the o ending on both of the uh, third person singular, the ste ending. So th there are some similarities that you'll eventually get used to. So um, again, the usual steps for conjugating apply. Uh, take a verb, let's say hablar again. We're gonna take off the AR, whatever ending it is, take off the ending of the verb, and then we're gonna plug in the right ending from the above charts for whoever's doing the action. So let's say ellos. Um, so we would end up with ellos hablaron. Pretty simple. Not too bad once you get used to it. Try to have these conjugation charts with you uh, whenever you're studying. So if they're both about the past, how are they different? This is just a, a summary. So the preterite describes completed actions in the past that normally happened on a one-off basis. It happened once. The events that have, uh, the, the preterite describes events that have definitive endings, like World War II. When we're talking about how long World War II lasted, we're going to say, we're going to use the preterite, even in English. Like, uh, I would never say uh, World War II used to end in 1945. That doesn't make sense. Actions that were part of a chain of events. The preterite describes actions that were repeated or a very uh, on a very specific number of times, and actions that specifically state the beginning and end of an action. The imperfect describes, on the other hand, uh, actions that were repeated habitually or several times over a period of time. Actions that set the stage for another past tense event. This is actually a really important piece of it. Um, so if I'm talking about, like, when I was six, I went to the store one time, or, or uh, maybe I, I went to the, I, I went to a concert, uh, one concert specifically. So the very first thing, like, when I was, um, cuando era, or cuando era niño, that era, E-R-A, that has to be the imperfect. But whenever I say I went to a concert, 
or an audio adrenaline concert, or wh whatever concert it happens to be, it would be Je Fui, or the, uh, the preterite. So we also use the imperfect for time and dates, a person's age in the past, and that's similar to cuando era niño, right, when I was a kid, or cuando tenía 14 años, when I had or when I was 14 years old. We also use it for characteristics and mental or physical states. This is kind of similar to the differences between ser and estar. Um, one of these is more permanent or, or, or stable, whereas the other one describes things that can change more often, mental and physical states. Now, if you ever, um, if you need mnemonic devices or if that's something that helps you, this is one that I found online, uh, Simba cheated. So preterites, the S stands for single actions and interruptions and the main event or the beginning action, arrivals and departure. Yo fui a las once, I left at 11 o'clock, right? Um, you would never say yo iba, that doesn't make sense. Yo iba a las once, that didn't make sense. That doesn't make sense if we're talking about a one-off action, so a single action. The imperfect correlates with cheated. Um, and this is for characteristics and descriptions. Um, and health, and emotion, age, yo tenía 14 años, right, I was 14, when I was 14, um, time, endless activities, and dates. So, good luck, and remember, your mnemonic device will help you, Simba cheated. And also remember, if used to doesn't work, it's probably not the imperfect tense.